Hey everybody, this is Rizzo, or Andrew, bringing you the first episode in our WPF community podcast, which we have dubbed, in the last 30 seconds or so, as being titled Our Family Dinner Podcast, right? So with me, I've got my... <laughs> I've got my sh my co-host, who's probably got a shit eating grin on right now because he came up with it on the spot. Uh, Yo, Pierre, also known as Sam. Yeah, it's not because I've been eating shit. It's just because it's it's so funny. Um, I mean, uh, it's yeah, dinner time. It is dinner time, and Riz has some uh, some boneless nuggets in front of him. So one of us are eating. That's it, uh, man. Right now. Yep. So uh, Pierre will be my co-host, right? We've got two guests on this week. One is the Fourteenth Doctor, or Jordan. What's up? Say, say hi, Jordan. There you go. Hi, and then Jordan. we've also got um, the Jersey Fits or Dan, also on the podcast this week. Hello. And in front of you, so you should be watching various replays from across the WPF, uh, divisions A through D, in no particular order, waiting, or, or otherwise. It's just something to have on in the background while you listen to us talk about nothing in particular. And I'm going to be distracted by it the whole time. You Great. should probably stop looking at it. Yeah, well, you're, just, just put you're it in the recording. background. Like, don't even look at it. <laughs> we may venture back and, and look at them every now and again. Like, I know Pierre is going to watch my most recent match from 20 minutes yeah. ago when it comes on the screen. But uh, this is a little bit of extra motivation for the coaches of WPF to get your matches in before the weekend. Because we'll normally be recording these on Friday and Saturday. So if you wait until Sunday night to play your game, you probably won't get to see it. Yeah, and we won't get to make fun of your moves. <laughs> that's it. Like, or you get to click dead. Like, that's <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, man. So out of playoffs. Ooh, not yet, anyway. I, I technically don't know if that happened yet. So I don't know, man. I'm fighting for it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll they get see. knocked out. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Pierre's got a list of just a couple of different topics we could hit on. So what what you got there first, man? Yeah, no, I just wanted to just say what's up with everybody. Um, I mean, Riss, how's how's your day going? What what have you been up to all day? Anything good? It, it's going all right. You know, none of the dogs have pee or anything in the house yet, so it's going good. But I'm not holding my breath that that's going to be my experience right. for the rest of the day. But did your old one just pee when you took it out just now or no? Yes. She did, okay. but so she's she's got an ear infection, right? So we had to give her steroids from the vet that make her drink water like like a hippo. I imagine hippos <laughs> drink a lot of water, and she <laughs> she's been having to be an excessive amount since then. Gotcha. I picked the worst battle. This is just gonna be a stall fest. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this my game? You yeah, it's your game, man. Look at all those yeah, region right. mods. Who else could it be? I was. Dude, I was already locked in for playoffs, so I just I figured I'd mess around and just bring five regenerators and see what happened. I've seen this Mega Guard for take like six sledge waves. Oh, actually, this is a different game. This is I think this is fairly game. recent, I think. I think it's the yeah, last week or something like that. It's technically week twelve because I played it early, I think. But it is what it is. Yeah, it's still a good game. A lot, so a something that we've been hyping up for a little while here is how Pierre. I'm sorry, how Sam and Dan are huge footy fans. Yeah. yeah and how that's going to comprise like half of the podcast at this point. So let's go ahead and just oh, get it out of the way. <laughs> if anyone's noticed by my PFP, it's a picture of Pierre Emmerich Aubameyang from uh, Arsenal wearing a Black Panther mask. Um, so if anyone's like a huge Arsenal fan or a huge soccer fan, you obviously know who he is. And my whole, the whole joke behind my like, I guess you would call it face name, internet name, whatever, is is basically just like a, a running joke within the Arsenal community. Um, you know, Jordan can probably, or Dan can comment a little bit further, but basically uh, Arsenal is going to buy this really big name player. I think we paid, what, like $80 million for him? Uh, like I think it Dan? was a bit, uh, like, I don't know if you're talking dollars or pounds. but yeah, um, dollars. Dollars, yeah, I think $80 million sounds right. Yeah, so we bought this big player, but the thing was, like, the whole summer, no one knew that we were going to buy him, or they were, weren't supposed to know, because uh, the team we bought him from is a publicly traded company, uh, Dortmund. So I guess uh, if anyone would find out, like, before their, uh, what, stockholders got a chance to, like, adjust or trade the stocks, um, they could get in a lot of trouble for insider trading or something like that. So Arsenal, in their great wisdom, they released this video where another player we had bought that summer who also played for Dortmund, um, in his video, he, at the end, he kind of like throws the ball forward 
and he asked the camera, yo, Pierre, you want to come out here? And they didn't cut it. And everyone knew that, like, we were linked with Pierre and Emmerich Aubameyang the whole freaking summer. And then he eventually ended up coming, but it was just, like, a big debacle at the time. And it was it was kind of funny. So, anyway, it, it stuck. And that was kind of right around the time that I was getting online and joining Pokemon Leagues and stuff. So, I just, I rolled with it. Yo, Pierre, 14. His number's 14, by the way. So, that's kind of where that came from. That makes sense. Okay. Kind of disaster is very fitting of Arsenal the last two or yes, three years. Yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I left that part out. Ah, you know well. Matter of fact, since we're talking about uh, just profile pictures in general, what what's yours about fits? Obviously, you like owls, right? Like that's a given. But there's got to be more to it than that. To my logo, I went to Temple University. Our um, uh, mascot is an owl, so Temple Knocked Owls makes a lot of sense for a team name. And then my friend is working on his Photoshop skills, so he offered to like make me a logo. And I didn't know a better thing for a Discord picture, so there it is. <laughs> that's Anything you want, me then. <laughs> Yeah, I changed my profile picture like like a woman changes clothes, right? Like it's it's every other day. I just throw something else up there because why not? I feel like you've had this one a decent amount, and the one before that too. Who's the like, who's the girl you usually use? Two or three days. Which, by the way, so Jordan, I would ask that you pause the current replay that you have. All right, pull up Google for me. Oh God, I got way too many. Mm-hmm. You All put right. you on the spot here. I want you to Google Anna Kendrick. Anakin Skywalker? No, not quite. Okay. This this glorious woman has been my profile picture in various uh, forms for the past couple of months. She she's most known for her Pitch Perfect trilogy movies, right? She's a fantastic actor, and my wife and I both love her to death. So that has been the woman that's been on my not a fucking porn star, like you guys keep saying. Where? I, Hold I, up! Wait a minute! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it got Wait. redirected to. Let's all right, about. now we're on a tangent. We, Close we out. all know what it got redirected to. Come on now. <laughs> Dude, when I first joined WPF, I thought that was like your wife or something. I honestly had no idea. <laughs> nah, man, and it's funny oh, too like, because they're risk pulling girls. I was like, shit, dude. Dude, I wish. Risk no, pulling Anna Kendrick. <laughs> that's quite impressive. Yeah, man. No, that's it. So, um, what about you, Jordan? What is this? This thing that you've got on your profile picture here all right so it's based off my name because the 14th doctor it's like a play on because right now in doctor who there's uh the 13th doctor and so i'm like i'm kind of the next one you know uh and that's a picture of a weeping angel and i just looked up a cool picture and i stuck with it because uh okay the name came originally from we were trying to play a prank on on this kid and I needed to be. I needed to join his league without him knowing who I was, and so like I infiltrated his league. And the whole point of it was to play the season until I played him and beat him. I had to beat him, so I played through like five weeks of the season, beat him, and then it was like, suck it, it's me. <laughs> and I, li I like the That's <clears throat> incredible like levels of pettiness there. I, Very. I, I like yeah. the name. <laughs> I respect that. Well, I like the name so much. I, I kept it. You gotta have fun with it, definitely. <clears throat> Oh yeah, it sucks. Well, that's it, man. You're the you're the only 14th doctor now. I think that's canon. Doctor Who's got to skip to 15. <laughs> yeah, like canon. whenever whenever the next doctor comes out, I'll have to switch it to the 15th doctor. Steve, but then I'm not gonna know who you are. <laughs> that's okay. Keep 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 <laughs> the same keep the same picture. That way we know. Yeah, I've kept it for a long time. Deductive reasoning, just uh, 14, 15. Uh, what happened to the 14th Doctor? He got replaced by this fucking weirdo 15th the Doctor. random person who definitely isn't the same guy. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Never seen him before in life. Oh, hey, Riz, what about, what's the name for, uh, or the reasoning behind your internet name, Rizzo? Where'd that come from? So, oh God, I'm trying to remember. So it doesn't actually mean anything. I know I, I mentioned to somebody in the chat way back when that it, it was like from my high school, like kids. Uh, my friend's name or whatever it totally wasn't it was just something i made when i was i was a kid and it stuck like that first really shitty email address that you make as a kid right oh yeah super embarrassing it sticks with you forever or whatever that was it mine was like rizzo 45 or something at like yahoo and that tells you how long ago that was gotcha so that's really it and then i don't know i like lion king so mufasa it is Hey man, and he's he's the king of the pride, man. You're the king of the server, so it makes sense. It works. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Man's out here 
uh, being okay with dating himself with the Yahoo thing. Big respect. <laughs> I, I felt like well, yeah. I didn't want to say AOL because I felt like that was way Dude, too far back. That's yeah. what I thought you were going with that. I added AOL, so I, I can relate to that. Yeah, man. Is is what it is. What uh, what are we drinking tonight, boys? You guys got any good beverages in front of you? Kane and Jacks, buddy. Ooh, okay. I Here, got you. Sorry, guys. What's up? Here, Orchard. I got a sweet tooth. Oh, you're a cider man, huh? Yeah. All really? right. Interesting. Dude, can you can you drink like three or four of them, or do you just drink one or two and then go to like something else? Um, depends on the night. night. It, yeah, because um, usually what I was going to say is like with a sweet tooth, I can't do like more than two sweet drinks. I could do one or two and then I got to move on to something else. A lot of times I'll like use it to drink other stuff, if that makes sense, because I actually like the taste of that as opposed to like, you know, if I'm at a party, it's like, oh, Miller Lite. Fine, but I'd rather just be drinking something that tasted it better. So, uh, okay. I'll tell you what's one of the easiest drinks that I found to drink out just alcohol base. Uh, or not even base, but just inclusive, is uh, if you warm up like apple cider and then you add fireball to it. Not a lot, obviously, because that, that's kind of wild, but it's almost like adding, uh, uh, what do they call it? Like Irish Irish coffee or whatever. It's, it's something like that, but it's warm. So when it's cold outside, you put it in like a thermos or something and you're, you're set. It's fantastic. Okay. Interesting. But. I've got a stout here, just a generic store bought whatever. Yeah, I, I forgot to pick up some beer this morning, so all I got in the fridge was Michelob Ultra. But I'm actually, I wish I could tell you I'm drinking my uh, White Walker, Johnny Walker, uh, Game of Thrones whiskey, but I'm actually trying to finish this bottom shelf. It's called Car Stairs, American blended whiskey. Have you ever heard of that? No, I haven't. You kind of you need to get like on your knees at the alcohol store to like see it on the bottom shelf. <laughs> Uh, it's so <laughs> shitty, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to get rid of it. So it, I mean, whatever. I mixed it with vanilla coke. It tastes the same. I'm uh, I'm almost through one. I'm about to start a second one. He got really slow. It you got to get on your knees, and I was like, oh god, what? Yeah, where is this yeah. going? Hey, you guys can take it wherever you want, man. Couldn't I'm tell if that meant really good or really bad, but uh, then then he cleared it up a bit. The, so the missus exclusive. makes me beg for my. Yeah, alcohol. for all you high school kids, bottom shelf is a bad liquor. <laughs> you want you want the liquor that you can't even reach. <laughs> that's the good stuff, dude. And for all you college kids, that's all that you could afford. So get used yes. to it. Yes, <laughs> fair. <laughs> Very tall. I can't reach anything. So. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. I'm five six. So I have. I. Have... A lot yeah, of I'm, I'm also five six. Hey, yeah, look at there. Short, short oh, people unite. Damn, dude. Jesus, I'm oh. six. I'm six six. Hey, are dude. you really? <laughs> yeah, I'm really six, six six. I'm uh, I'm five eight. I guess. Throw it in there. What do you mean your guess? Well, I mean everyone you know else your height? their their height. I guess I'll I'll throw in my height too if you guys want. Five, I don't know if I trust you. Matter of fact, go I'm, I'm go get eight. yourself a tape measure. We're gonna settle this right now. <laughs> I'm five eight, dude. Am I five eight? I don't know. Last time I checked, I was like 12, so... I'll send you a same. picture of my license if you care that much to see it. Oh my he, god. He's actually 5'4". He's, actually five four. Yeah, he's Brazilian, named Bernard, and plays for Everton. Yeah, really. Dude, they don't even measure yeah, you. They right. just ask what your height is. You know how funny that would be, though? Somebody like my height walk in like, oh yeah, I'm 6'5". Like, prove me wrong. <laughs> my yeah, license looks eyeballer. like garbage because... So the, little, the, the camera they use for it, right? Yeah. It's not like a, a physical camera. It's like a freaking webcam. And they just have it yeah, sitting on their desk. And so if yeah. you're short, it works fine for you. But I'm freaking tall. So what they had to do is they had to bend it up. So it looks like they're taking a picture just pointed up my nose. It looks Why don't you terrible. just squat down? Why won't you just squat down? I didn't know that's how it was going to be. <laughs> I've heard horror stories in the past of DMVs that have like static cameras that don't toggle or move any which way. So that if you have somebody who's super tall that comes in, they get like a picture of your chest. I'm like, that's your license photo? I've seen one before. And it's what? so fucking funny. Dude, I would <laughs> love to, to have one of those. Yeah, you get in anywhere. They it's amazing. You are. Tell I mean, me my, my chest doesn't look 21. Do it. I mean, I'm old enough to get into these places anyways, but that would be way awesome. Right? I mean, maybe if the shirt's open, they can see your chest hair. Then they, they know, right? You gotta be at least over. Mm, he's clean shaven. <laughs> now he's gotta be like, <laughs> take him out. Yeah, I guess that's fair. That's it. I mean, that means nothing, dude. Kids in high school had like 
full beards and a back full of hair. No, you're right. That's crazy. Some kids did. Yeah, it was weird how like spraying you know in front of the rest of the kids, and you had kids that like had peach fuzz or nothing at all. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was the peach fuzz kid, so yeah, it makes sense. Or you? I was like kind of in the middle. I didn't really like grow a full beard to like college, but like I definitely had more than peach fuzz in high school. Oh no, I'm I'm 23 and I I still can barely grow a mustache. Really? Oh man. But I mean, that's... I don't even know what a I don't even know what a beard is. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of annoying to like take care of it every day. I'll be I'll be honest, but easy. Just get you a job that won't let you have facial hair for some unforeseen reason. <laughs> Yeah, but isn't that annoying for you though too? You gotta you gotta shave every day, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So like, I can grow a pretty good looking beard, but I have to shave it every day. So like, when it, when I go on leave for everybody who's who's listening, I'm in the army, the United States Army. So when I go on leave for like a week or two at a time, I'll come back and I'll kind of look like a lumberjack. But the next day I come back and then it's like, holy shit! Like Andrew's reverse age, seven years. What happened? <laughs> who who is this baby in uniform in front of me right now? You were gonna retire in like a month, but no, you're actually here for for another uh, decade. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. All the cadets are like confused. That's it, man. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, just to, to kind of loop this back to the WPF thing, is the new sort of ranking algorithm that our good buddy V came up with the other day. You guys will know him as Vesper, the uh, one of the C division mods. He came up with this awesome sheet that details a more mathematical approach to how we can approach uh, placing different coaches, legacy coaches, at the end of a current season, right? So it has different weightings, and this document will be used in addition to anything like, um, like obviously, if you win a championship, like that will, co- that will count for something. It's not going to be the only thing used for it, right? So I think the only person in this call who has seen it other than me is Pierre, who helped kind of write it a little bit and I, uh i did not uh v did it all on his own he kind of just ran some ideas off me and showed it to me at the end but oh did he I, oh well yeah but take I, appreciate, credit, man. Hey, I appreciate you yeah i'll take credit <laughs> you're the only one here you might as well <laughs> you did 50 percent of it man yeah i, I basically did the whole thing <laughs> where just basically. walk me through it that's it exactly yeah so how are you guys feeling about your playoff standing so far just to segue okay. to that that document from it not good <laughs> not good yeah. like how are you guys five? doing by the way so jordan you're in c or b i'm in c i think i'm at five and five i, I can't remember let's see all right let me get your standings up what, and then yeah. dan what division are you in and b i clinch if i win tomorrow or if um lose this yeah i'm sitting right. at five and five just out of playoffs right now all right what's your team name the bear tip Oh, my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> I don't even like the Bear Ticks. <laughs> you don't like Bear Tick? What, dude? No, it's just... see, like, And I, Chicago I, Bears, I assume? I love the Chicago Bears, and I had... Way back when, oh, so I saw Galactic Elliot's, like, uh, Cub Chews, and I was like, oh, oh, yeah, I, Cub oh, Chews, yeah. Like, yeah. I can't steal that, because, I mean, that would be way too obvious. You like, absolutely could. Uh, no, yeah. I, I don't like stealing <laughs> I would 100% be the Philadelphia 70 Scissors if uh, Chimpak didn't already have that. Uh, okay. Fair. Scissor is my favorite Pokemon, but he already had it. And he's well known enough that I'm like, ah, I don't want to have the same name. And <laughs> so, what's your team name, Dan? Uh, Temple Knockdowls. Oh, okay. Oh, from your picture, duh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right there. I was going to let you go, you. but uh, if you want to. Hey. <laughs> something I, I myself, right? See, good. but my I'm favorite not, Pokemon. I'm not that drunk. My favorite Pokemon wouldn't fit. Yeah on a team really like smeargle is my favorite pokemon but that is tough can you really? you what can you, can you walk me through that why is your favorite pokemon? i don't know <laughs> i can, I can <laughs> see that it's it's so meaty it's like that's fun it just learns all the every move uh it's like meh meh smeargle all right it's just awesome in my opinion it's like a you and Zunatic team. from A Division would get along very well. I think he's brought Smeargle to like every match that he's had it. He has. He's I mean, it in a way, time. Smeargle killed Darkrai, a an Uber Pokemon. So Darkrai, nice. what? Because it killed Dark Void. Oh, I got you. Super nerfed because of it. Oh, okay. And killed its uh, usability. 
I've got so it. Away, there. That's why it came down to fifty percent because Smeardle could learn it. That's wild. Yeah, so it was getting destroyed. It was just destroying everything in um, uh, VGC. VGC. So like we had, so it had to get nerfed eventually. I don't know why they couldn't just use. So there's uh, only there's only one, re like really rare Smeargle card, and I've got it PSA graded ten. Oh, do you? Yeah, like because there's not. I mean, it's not that rare. It's like it was like thirty bucks or something. <laughs> It's not like a free yeah, it's you know, like nobody gives a shit about it. Exactly. You know, it's it's funny you bring that up because I actually just started collecting Pokemon cards again, and I got every card to the first like two fifty one except for I think Raikou right now. Let's see what my scenario is. Oh man, I heard the zipper. Pull it out. I know. I'm pulling it out. Let's see. I've only got a Can handful be... of graded cards because like my favorite card right ever was the uh, the ancient Mew card. And I, I got that too. I, I had one when I was a kid, and someone stole it, and so I mean, what? That, like, that ruined my childhood. Oh, you should, you'd need to fight them like right now. Well, I don't <laughs> find them. I don't yeah. know. Find them and fight them. I don't know who did. If it, it makes you feel cool. any better, I got a little tangent. When I was like in first grade, and like Pokemon cards first came out, this is like back when uh, Gen One was like a thing. Do you remember the uh, how the very very old cards had like a lighter color texture and then the numbers on the hp were like thinner you guys remember that at all sort well, of, yeah. anyway they used to have it was bullshit but he said it was like a, a light water or dark water gyarados and he traded me it for my zapdos and it was like a it ended up being a fake uh, gyarados card anyway and i lost my freaking zapdos so i was so pissed off for like five years right i was raging hard um but i got my revenge uh the kid's little brother was in my grade and uh we were like decently friends i don't know we would hang out every once in a while but uh in high school i had this kid um long story short he was argentinian and he played soccer and he had nowhere to live so my dad ended up adopting him he lived with me senior year anyway we were over at his house one day and like randomly doing his pokemon card. and uh his brother had this uh like kind of like we i don't know if it was it was rated but it was definitely in like a case and it was like mint condition uh charizard and uh, we were just bullshitting around. And I was like, Bloss, dude, you should just steal that from this kid. This kid's a loser anyway. And he ended up taking it. So we got home like, later that night. And uh, like, I'd forgotten about it. And uh, I think we were at dinner or something. And Bloss like, reached in his pocket. He's like, oh, shit, dude. I got this Charizard. You want it? And I was like, hell yeah. So I actually have a kid's Charizard. So I got my revenge. <laughs> you are truly yeah. a petty king. I, yes. I admire it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got him back years later, and he probably has no idea that I have his Charizard, but it's it's an awesome card. I completed my set, so. You know what? If we're, if we're going to get on the subject of, like, being super petty, like, at a younger age, I have, like, the dumbest... Well, matter of fact, would the story translate? So has anybody here heard of the game RuneScape at all? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, that, that makes sense, because everybody in this call is over 20 years old, so... Back when I was like eight or nine, like it was like 2002 or 2003, like they had just made the transition from RuneScape Classic to like RuneScape 2, right? And my cousin would come over every summer. Cousin Kyle would come over. And we would get on my dad's old like di dial up uh, modem to get on the computer to play this, play this game. We would take like half hour turn. And we were just the, the newest players to the game, right? So we would stand in like one corner and like mine iron for like hours at a time, right? Like trying to get to like a rune pickaxe or something like relatively small. Yeah. Yeah. And we finally did. It, it took us like four or five days of like six hours a day, like just trying to get to this one item. And um, the second we got it, like his turn was up. So he like left the room, went to go whatever. I totally dropped it and like picked it up on my account. And was like, dude, I don't know what happened. Like, you got hacked. Whatever. <laughs> it's crazy. And I still haven't told him that that's what happened way back when because he was distraught. Like, this man, kid at the time, like, went back to the room and, like, cried all day long. Oh, you can't tell him now. You can't. Well, he's going to hear the fucking podcast now. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> even I never see him again. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, when you oh, inevitably hear this, uh, I'm sorry. Please don't send me hate mail. Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, rough. Jordan, so which Smeargle? Which Smeargle did you have? The one where it's like a yin-yang, like green painting or whatever? 
Um, I have to go find it. I don't know. Uh, no worries. I, I think I think Smeargle's holographic, right? Mine's actually not. It's first edition, but it's not holographic. Which is a little disheartening. But anyway, I digress. I so uh, I had a smear when I was a kid, but I have no idea what happened to it. I think it's the one you're talking about, but I'm not sure because it's been ages. I know, dude. I know. I'm I'm just gonna try to collect the original 251 and then call it. I'm not. Gonna... For like a couple days, I was like, I want to just understand how the TCG works, or at least like try. And after a couple of like, no, nope. Dude, it's, I've I've got it's enough crazy. shit in my brain. I don't I don't need this. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Riss might remember when they had uh, they had battles at uh, like the local Toys R Us. You could go take your decks on like Saturday mornings or something. Dude, you could play. so that was me. So I had two separate decks, right? Yeah. I had like my go hard in the pants, like like Entei <laughs> deck, right? Like that was because it was Gen two when I really first got into Pokemon. Yeah. I had like Entei and like an army of Raditas, right? And that's like <laughs> what I went with. And then I had like my my book with the document protectors and everything was tucked in and super organized, whatever. And that was like a Saturday morning thing until Yu-Gi-Oh came out. Because let that's me let that's me just iterate how hard in the paint I went when Yu-Gi-Oh was the thing. That little arm sleeve thing where you could like play your cards. That oh that was, yeah. That was all I did for like six months. <laughs> like at school, on the bus, <laughs> in the grocery store, like let's duel. Like that was me all the time. <laughs> Dude, I remember those. Those were awesome. <clears throat> they were they're way cool. too expensive though. They were. I never had one, but they were they seemed cool. I did the Pokemon thing on Sunday mornings at this like um trading card place where in my old hometown. Um then I moved, and then Yu-Gi-Oh became like the thing, and Pokemon wasn't. So I like tried to Yu-Gi-Oh. Wildly different. There, there was like zero skills that went from one game to the other, other than you're yeah. using cards. Like that was the only transferable part. <clears throat> See, we tried Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. for a little bit, and then that's when they told us that uh, uh, Exodia was banned, and we were like, <laughs> "All right, we quit then." Yeah. <laughs> Blue eyes, white dragon, yeah. motherfucker. That's literally the only one I know. We're in here, yeah. Uh, something magician and something girl or female magician. That sounds in the right ballpark. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> yeah, it could be magic. Could be Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't... <laughs> Definitely Yu-Gi-Oh. I know. I know. I can picture it, but I can't remember the name. So my mom made me a bet, like ten-year-old me, way back when, that we were sitting in a Chili's. It was like two in the the afternoon, whatever. She picked up like a red chili pepper and was like, if you eat this right now, I will buy you like a pack of cards. Like I'll get you 20 bucks and you can go buy some cards or whatever. Like she said it as a joke, like holding it out of my reach. And I launched across that table and scarfed down that pepper. Ate it all. Didn't even didn't know that not only was obviously that a really bad idea to begin with, but I was like, I was allergic to peppers. (laughs) That was a real thing that I eventually grew out of, but they didn't. So when I ate the pepper, Every rest, every server in that restaurant was on like on call status, bringing me milk and water and bread and whatever. And they're trying to put out this fire. Twenty minutes later, they're like, "Wow, he's still like not doing so hot." I was having an anaphylactic reaction. They finally figured out, but uh, that was the best twenty dollars I ever earned. <laughs> after I, you nearly died. Um... Exactly. Yeah. Twenty. She didn't give you more than twenty after that. That's. She made uh, that's an experience. It. Well, and that's it. Yeah, like we we finally got done at the hospital, and and I was an outpatient, and I was like, "Mom, where's my money? I need that." <laughs> There's a Seven Eleven down the street. Like we're stopping on the way home. I was serious. Uh, that's amazing. Uh. Hey, <laughs> Jordan, you might want to throw another uh, match up. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm still looking for this card. <laughs> hey man, no worries. Super um, important. It, it is, hundred percent. I found all of my cards that I know that are not really worth much, but they're worth more like sentimentally than anything. Yeah. Sure. Like uh, you know when they did the re-release for the uh, original one hundred fifty-one cards. Mm-hmm. All right, second so edition I'm, cards. I'm talking about like the twenty-year anniversary ones. Oh no! Did they? I didn't know about that. Yeah, they re-released them, and uh, 
So I've got the I've got the holographic Charizard from that. So that was pretty cool. Uh, there's a couple cards that I just thought were really cool as a kid because I didn't really know anything about the uh, what were they called? Uh, was it Neo Genesis or whatever? Yeah, uh, where they were was, uh, Gen two. It was Gen two, and you got Japanese cards. I just thought they were way cooler because yeah. they were Japanese. So I've got like the uh, some of my original cards. I've got like the Typhlosion from that one, and then I've got the Victory Bell from that one. Uh, let's see. My man, Victory Bell. <clears throat> yeah. Is, so are the 20th anniversary cards literally like the exact same, or are they a little bit different in some? They're the exact same. They just have like a little different uh, you know, little marker in the corner that tells you. Yeah, the bottom right there. It just tells I mean, you that makes. Sense. Like it's not really in Game Freak's best interest to like crash the market of uh, absolutely. We yeah. have Charizards, all right? Uh, no, but like all the old cards that are are worth money. Like if they were to re-release the exact same cards, like brand new, that whole market just collapsed. I mean, then... yeah, they look identical. They just have that little marker that's different. That's the only only difference. Well, yeah, uh, I got you. And then I don't I don't know if any of you guys got to do this, but if you remember the tenth year anniversary of Pokemon. They went around the nation like having all these events and whatnot, and so mm-hmm. I went there and I got a Pikachu card the with a 10th anniversary sticker, not sticker, but like a logo on it and everything. I got that yeah. still. Um, I have to show you guys this picture of the Charizard card. I have. I think this is worth something. <laughs> and then I, I have. My, do what? I it, still it have a holographic. Fest we're watching right now. So, yeah. oh yeah, I, I still have a holographic um, Charizard <laughs> from when I was a kid. Oh, this is. Like, I think it's the first one was released or whatever of the like for the main Charizard that you think of. I have oh, the ones. I'm curious. I have this one right here. I sent it to you guys. And then I have my first Pokemon card that I've ever got. Oh my god, that picture did not work out. <laughs> wow, it's, it's white screen. Yeah, it's white screen. <laughs> That's an incredible Charizard. That is not. That is not what it looked like when I took the picture. Uh, and I have my first Pokemon card ever. I got it from a kid on the bus because uh, for whatever reason he didn't like it anymore. So like it, it, <laughs> Probably a Rattata. Dude, that's that's you know? all the trades happen on the bus. <clears throat> it's not worth Dude, anything because cool. you'll see it. It looks hor- horrifically like damaged and everything. But it's right. uh yeah, it was my first card ever, so I still got that. Right there. Ooh, I dig that. Yeah. Holy shit! Two hundred damage. <laughs> Christ. Does anything have 200 health? I don't think uh, anything does. Was it Charizard the Max of 120? I think Chansey had 22. I mean, the, new, the new stuff has that much HP, I bet. Like, let's see. They upped it, they upped it a lot. Did they? I was going to say, like, where are some of the new cards at? Uh, No, I've got like a Mewtwo EX that's 180 HP. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> I've got a Mega Pidgeot uh, EX that's uh, 220 HP. I thought I was dropped in the chat is when I have at home. But and I've had, since like I was like five. Yeah, not in good shape still. I have zero Pokemon cards still. Y'all are nerds. No. Do you? Yeah. No, I, my I, wife makes fun of me all the time. I like, oh, gave I away. Like I gave most of mine away to my um little cousin, but I kept like thirty or forty of them just because I liked those specific ones. Yeah. Yeah. This is super nerd. I uh I kind of want to like. Whenever I like buy a big house and stuff and have like a game room or a man cave in the basement, I want to put like the original 151 and kind of like a uh, like a drop box. If you guys know what that is, um, where or a shadow box, I guess it's called, and just have them like up on the wall, like all in order. I think that'd be pretty cool. Let me show you what I've got in my in my living room here. Just a minute, I have to put all this crap away. Yeah, I still don't know where I did with my <clears throat> with that smeargle. I'll have to find it here in a minute. Yeah. But, uh, I played so badly with my Mian Shaw in this game. <laughs> so let it get destroyed by Metagross right there. Let's switch these sides real quick. Here we go. All right, I'll BRB. I'm going to go take a picture. All right, sounds good. Worth um, it. Since we're in like the inner wall, Riss, it's cool you. I'll uh, kind of explain. I don't know if this is how we're going to do the podcast going forward, but kind of what we came up with, you know, we'll, we'll split the podcast up into three parts. Part one is kind of, introduction kind of you know bs a little bit see what's going on with us uh part two kind of pertains to we haven't really done a good job of that so far but part two pertains to what's going on in the wpf like what's new and everything like that and then uh part three would be where we kind of answer your guys' questions um you know go through stuff that you either dm us directly or that you guys drop 
in, uh, I believe, the podcast Dropbox. Preferably, yeah, in the podcast Dropbox. If you DM me, I promise you, I will lose it in not remember. Yes, fair enough. You can at me at yopier 14 on Discord, but I'll probably lose it as well. Yeah, because we're forgetful guys. So uh, I guess with that being said, um, you know, I was kind of out this morning, but I saw some stuff going on in the announcements about the Nuzlocke thing. Can you kind of explain that a little bit, uh, Andrew, if you got a second? Yeah, so Daniel or the Tooth Fairy, I forget exactly why that's his name now, but Daniel has this idea where I guess there are emulators for just you get through the internet, right, and you can play different copies of different games. I guess there is a mechanism by which you can have like 10 people, right, to play like different segments of a Pokemon game where you have Daniel would be the first one. He would start out in like, you know, Pallet Town or, or whatever for using Gen 1 as an example. Yeah. And he would play all the way up until he beats Brock. Then he like passes that save file onto somebody else. Um, the decisions are, you know, they're theirs to be made and they can do whatever from, from town to town up until they need to pass it off to the next person. And then at the end, I guess it is just completed. I don't exactly know if there's any other point to it besides just playing through the game. Just uh, one section of a game for you that's like completely kind of not yours. <laughs> and then giving yeah, it to somebody. Interesting. I think that's what that is. So far they've got eight people who are interested in it. I think they wanted to have ten. So I guess the reason I'm asking is because uh, me and V are actually going to do something similar. Um what he refers to a Nuzlocke is uh, a little bit differently. You could probably comment, you know, afterwards. But uh, the way I understand it is basically, so we start a new game, right? Like when Gen 8 comes out, we're probably going to play the game once through, like straight up or whatever, save our mons, and then we'll reset the game and we'll do what's called a Nuzlocke. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't let any of your Pokemon die. If they die or faint, uh, they're basically off limits. You can't use them anymore. Um, they die, so you, yeah. You have to be like very... Um, <laughs> whatever uh careful with how you use them and then also the other aspect is on each route you can only catch the first pokemon you encounter so like uh, you know on route one they always have like a pidgey or whatever rat attack you, you have to catch the first one you run into um if you can't catch it or you kill it then you can't catch any more pokemon on that route you have to go to the next route before you can catch another pokemon um and kind of so on and so forth and you kind of play through the game like that and if you, yeah, like I said, like if you lose a Pokemon, then you have to start over or, uh, or yeah. Start over, um, what? Like, like you have to quit because you, you have, if you're out of Pokemon, you, you have to start over. Oh, if you're out, you said if you lose a Pokemon, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Well, well that too. I mean, I, I guess you'd revert to like your last save game and try to do the thing over and not lose the Pokemon. Right. What? Yeah. No, I think that's correct. That sounds intense. That's I've ne yeah, I've never done it before. He said it's, re it's really like a lot of fun. Um, we got his brother and then another one of my buddies that we know in real life to do it. So there's going to be four of us in it. Um, I've never done one before, but I'm, I'm pretty pumped I, for it. I so think that, like that part's just extra, I think. Like where if you lose a Pokemon, you start over. I think that'd be like a... Cause, I mean, I've, I've done a bunch of Nuzlocke. That's just an extra thing that they probably added. I'm, okay, yeah, I guess I'm sorry. Like I'm, <clears throat> I didn't know if you guys had done them before or whatever. Yeah, I've got a couple on my channel. Like I did, uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, Black and White, Black and White Two. Um, did I do the other one? Diamond and Pearl. No, I did a uh, Platinum. Yeah, I did Platinum. Oh shit! So you, so you guys have done this. So this has been around for a while then. I'm, I'm just a noob, I guess. Oh yeah, it's been around <laughs> for like, like a long time. It's all over YouTube. <laughs> Is it? <All> right. <laughs> like right, the sorry. massive PokeTuber guys do them. Yeah. Hey, just if you want to edit out the last like uh, two minutes of the podcast before uh -huh. we release it, that's that's fine. Yeah, just Sorry, take that no part editing. out. Just pretend that I didn't <laughs> speak. Live. We'll just, thing. We'll, we'll just let you. We'll leave in the part where you thought you were like a genius, but uh. So <laughs> we're yeah. this, this new game type. Something new, something cool. Yeah, this new game type. That no one has ever heard right. of it before, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Trust me on this one. All right, I found all my graded cards and stuff too. Did you? All right, I'm gonna make another Lord. drink note those are some old school looking packs yeah man oh those aren't the graded ones those are just what i have in my living room but my cat knocked them all over well just just the pictures of them yeah they look really intense uh yeah the one in my living room there that's on my, i've got these two sets of shelves so the three on the right are original packs from uh 1996 and then the other four are when i did the re-release for the 20th anniversary 
I wonder if there's a yeah. way that you can show this script. Like, if you were to pause the uh, the match that's going on and then show these pictures that you're sending us. Um, so you can just pull up your Discord quickly. Like, maybe that's a thing. Open it up, right? Like, yeah. Open the picture. Open the yeah. picture. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, three on the right packs are, worth. are oh, like, dude. original 96 packs. And then the four on the left are when they did the re-release. Um, that's pretty cool. The other picture I can open up real quick. These are yeah, some of the great. That's the same smeargle I had. Yeah, I've got the. I had to get the ancient Mew one. I, let me rotate this. Oh hell yeah! Hell yeah! I can't. I had to get the. Oh god! I had to get the ancient <laughs> Mew because that's my favorite card of all time. Uh, I had to get the smeargle because that's the only graded smeargle I could find. Uh, I got the here comes Team Rocket because I forget which YouTuber I was watching had it on sale. So I was like, whatever. I'll get another graded card. And then that Entei right there, that was a uh, promotional yeah. card. Yeah. Yeah. The it's Entei actually surprising. Yeah, that Entei card actually isn't that valuable, which is wild. I would think it would be. I mean, they made tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of them. I, I looked it up. That's probably, yeah, that's probably why then. Yeah, because you can buy that for like five bucks on eBay, which is like weird. The other Entei's were like 40. Yeah, you can buy it like in brand new in package for like five bucks. <laughs> Yeah. Jeez. So your Smeargle online. Right now, uh, I mean, it's probably not worth much. It's just. It's... Actually, yeah, this one's going for four bucks. Don't I buy this? You talking about the card, or uh, is it like the graded card? It's just a card, but looking at the oh. pictures, dude, it looks pretty mint. Uh, I mean, obviously the years is ten, but. Um, well, uh, so I guess there's a little scratch on it. It wasn't that expensive oh. to buy either. I might make a purchase here while we're in the podcast, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Grab myself my own Smeargle, sure. Because Smeargle's the All best. Right, here, here's a, a Mint number 10 one first edition, and it's $33. So, yeah, see, there you go. It's not that valuable. Yeah, I think that's a whole section of life that I just don't have anymore. Or my cards cards yeah, yeah. I, lo I lost a lot of mine because around like sixth or seventh grade i decided i was kind of done with them because i had a i mean i had i don't know 200 of them at that time and it was like, like at the perfect time because i could sell all these cards to my classmates for like way too much money <laughs> that's nice because i mean none of them knew what the internet was really you were a were you, you were a pokey dealer you were that dude who stood outside the uh the gaming casino and like gave me all these coins <laughs> basically so I'll i made you. i made like a hundred dollars at school because i mean i was selling like just because they were holographic like ten dollars a piece and they probably weren't worth anything uh because they were like they were well played with and everything and so i made like a hundred bucks i even had kids come into my house like it was like drug deals on the. I mean, it was it was funny. <laughs> and then my parents found out. They were like, uh, because I they saw I had like a whole lot of you know, twenties and tens and fives and whatnot. And they're like, yeah. Uh. They're like, how did Who, little, what are you feeling, bro? They're like, how did little uh, eleven year old you get a hundred dollars? And I was like, I mean, I'm rolling in it because a hundred dollars to me is like a million dollars. Because I have no idea about money, and so they're they're like, yeah, how'd you uh, how'd you get that? I was like, oh, I just sold some of my old cards, you know. Got tired of that. They're like, uh, we're gonna have to take some of that from you. <laughs> we're gonna have to tax that. No, just because it was at school, they took it from you. Yeah, no. It's fine. About the time you started paying rent, Mister Eleven Year Old. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> Been mooching off us for too long. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah. We should throw a, I don't know if you have an order, Jordan. You should throw Riss's matchup next so we can watch that. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Actually roast him on the spot. I've that's somehow, it. That's, somehow that's we got to a, a D battle. <laughs> we skipped all the way from A to D somehow. <laughs> Who is on the screen right now? I can't really see. Chef Zombie yeah. versus uh, Umbrioff. I'm, with... I'm, uh, with... I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'd have to I, I'm really excited for for this next season, just so I can get a different team. Because let me tell you what, you Pierre, your boy like Mega Venusaur, not working for me. It's not. I great. know. I feel like he doesn't fit your style. Maybe. Yeah. He's, it's he's weird. Super Stolly. I wait. What? 
You have to play him like Solly. You have to play Leech Seed. Yeah, I'm not. Because he's that, not that type. If I had to like self diagnose, I feel like. I, so I play conservative. I definitely don't do like high often, but I really enjoy um, like bulky off. Maybe the best yeah. way to say it. Maybe not. Yeah. I honestly don't know. Matter of fact, you play me pretty frequently. You you uh, give me a rating. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, our last match this season, like you, you play your Skarmory really well. Um, I think the only reason I broke you was did I get a special defense drop on you, or how did I break your Skarmory? I forget exactly what it was. Oh, oh it was the... or I pushed a defog maybe. <laughs> no, it was the tornadoes. Because because remember, so like. I stayed in on Tornadus, like daring you to heat wave me oh, so I could yeah. toxic it. And then suddenly I didn't yeah. have a switch in to uh, Reuniclus yes. Psyshock. Yes, so you let me heat wave you. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, I think you, you, I don't know, you're pretty balanced, I, I would say. Um, but with Mega Venusaur, he's just like, he's literally like on, someone has like a, a Z move or like, um, you know, obviously like a Torn or a Staraptor or like a really high offensive, um, his weakness. You have to, yeah. He, he's, he's not, he, like, he's unkillable. Bleach Seed in Synthesis, you're getting 65%. Like, nothing can kill you. And, and you're taking right. damage away from the other guy. So you, you just have to play him Stolly. I don't know, is what I found last season. And, uh, he just is a tank. <clears throat> He, he's People like, just never put he, enough prep into it. People just never like think about too. it enough. It's that's just not too. the first thing that comes to mind because it's not a huge offensive threat. Right, right. But he, but he's like under the. I think it depends a lot on how you, you know build I mean? your team around it, though. Like, that too. Yeah, you got to cover it. Yeah. I've had Mega Metachim twice, and in one season, I hated its guts. I mean, I I couldn't do anything with it. It felt like it never outsped anything. It felt like it never O-coded anything. It just it died. Every single match, I mean, it was terrible. And then I had it again the second time, and I couldn't, like, I couldn't die with it. It was just, I mean, just going to town every single week, getting, like, three or four kills. No one would outspeed it. Nothing could live a hit from it. Yeah. I'm willing to bet that that, that team where you found more success with it had, like, a really fast electric type and, like, a really strong steel type with, like, priority. Uh, it was actually in Ubers. Oh, really? I, I, yeah. I, was, I took over a team for somebody, and... I would click bulk up once and then just kill everything. That makes sense because, like, in, in a regular draft, Wait, the Mega Man Champ is the first thing you prep for because it's just so strong. It lacks switch ins. Whereas, like, in Uber's format, that's probably the third or fourth thing you address. Right. So, therefore, it gets well, more freedom to just it, kind of it wasn't, stuff. It wasn't full Uber's. It was like, I can't remember what Uber I had, but I had like one, just one, you know, really, really strong Pokemon. And then. I think Mega Metachan was like the second pick the team had or something like that. I'll, I'll say it again. This, play. The super, oh, yeah. If we're, Sorry, so, I've been watching your game, yeah. Yep, so real thing, Josh was actually an OG Season 1 coach. So he was the first person who introduced me to like the quad weather dynamic because I had never seen that before. Uh, he destroyed me. I think he like bulk run and swept me or something. But it's funny that he is now back in Season 3 because I finally got my chance to redeem myself and play him again. So that's what this match is boiling down. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know oh, if we want to... Dude, the knockoffs from the Persian are killing you right now. Uh, not really, I don't think. Like, he's he's showing me his moveset, and it's really not that much for me to be scared of. Yeah. But he's taking all your items, and then he's getting a free switch in for momentum, basically. Yeah, See, but... Cool. The... The only team on, like, the only thing on this team that really wanted to take special hits was Blissey. And Blissey did, like, nothing for his momentum. Like, his. When every time he had to switch into Blissey, when I brought in, like, Sylveon or, uh, like, Vicavolt, one, one of those is that yeah. he had to, like, wish pass into something else. So, what wound up happening is this right here. Oh, my God. I love so, that. Blissey. I have not used that, that set, but I love that set. So, Banded yeah, Last Resort has no switch in. And every time he brought in Blissey, but he showed Flamethrower, I think, already. That was, like, his only offensive move. And it did so little to Kamala that I got a free switch in every time. Um, and then it just became a game of, of managing hazards and keeping my, my two special defense walls alive. Interesting. Yeah, he's got a lot of pivoting on this team. And it's like every time he goes into Blissey just to take a hit. And then... 
that yeah. Kamala yeah. set is my favorite set of all time. Like, it's such a fun set. Especially if you can run cover four moves, right? You only have two or something, don't you? Yeah. So so the way, exactly. So the way the the comatose, the ability of Kamala works is that it treats it like it's asleep, like it is inflicted with like permanent sleep status. However, it's still able to use moves, so it can't be toxic. But you can use sleep talk. So instead of doing like a uh, like a fake out last resort set, which is what Mega Low Bunny runs, it can run sleep talk last resort, and because that's the only move that it can use. You're effectively getting like a almost uh what is it, like giga impact or like hyper beat, like one of those kind of power moves every time without recharging. Oh, I get it. Okay. So and throw a choice band on yeah, it. Yeah, and you can choice band it unlike yeah. 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 Okay. So you've got a stab boosted okay. 140 base power move that you just fire off. To me, it's like physical oh. X Blab. And I love X Blab. I love them both. Yeah. Did you not have U turn on uh, Infernape? Uh, do you want me to spoil it for you or no? Uh, I, I'm just asking why you didn't U turn. Yeah, no, so I don't have U turn on there. So it's actually funny. The U, or the Infernape set that I've got here didn't actually get to do what I wanted it to do. So in my mind, I have Mega Alakazam. So he's bringing like Hella Scarf Bolt Turn Core, right? So between like yeah. Scarf U turn from Landorus and Bolt Switch from uh, Heliolus. He can go right into something like Blissey and uh, really wear down my Mega Alakazam. I didn't wind up bringing it just because I didn't think like it had that good of a match with his two dark types that he wound up bringing to this. And, yeah, uh, he, he definitely prepped for it. Definitely, yeah. So the Infernape is a mixed set with Adrenaline Orb. So I've got Close Combat, Swords Dance, HP Ice, and Earthquake on. So the idea was that he was going to switch in Landorus to, you know, Scarf Landorus to check uh, Infernape. I would get the speed boost from Adrenaline Orb on the Swords Dance, Oko with HP Ice, and then suddenly he doesn't have a switch in for it. Um, Interesting. He knocked off the Adrenaline Orb, and he wound up not being scarfed, but it didn't really work. Did he knock it off with? Did he knock it off with Persian? Persian? Did I miss that? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it already happened. I don't know either. That is one of those really tough... three of your items already. Yeah, he's lost almost all his items already. Uh, Adrenaline Orb is one of those really awesome... But really risky uh, item. Like, I freaking brought it against a guy that had two Intimidators, and he brought both of them without Intimidate. I mean, it just had a useless Milotic at that point. <laughs> I, I was oh, running, uh, like, a, like a competitive set. I was yeah. competitive, yeah. Adrenaline Orb, offensive, fully offensive Milotic. He brought neither, uh, he brought both Pokemon, neither of them had Intimidate. Man. What is this one of those where you, you have to make sure you get the exact situation correct, or else you've wasted your item. Which is right. why it's a. Yeah. Is why it's not a more popular item. But. Well, he's got Landers. Like that's the only ability he could bring. He was definitely bringing it this, way, but it wound up not working. So speaking of losing items, this is the turn where I actually lose my choice band because the Uxie essentially uh, sacrifices itself. Totally or well, yeah, yeah, here in a moment. Oof. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Damn. But it'll still, I'll showcase it later in the match. Kamala, even without the choice band, is still just incredibly strong. That was so worth it because now he has to go into Blissey every single time I'm firing off any sort of special attack, which if you look at the mons I have left, there's three different yeah. kinds of special attacks that just nothing else on the team wants to take. Does he have no defog? I don't, no. No, I'm talking about he's, him. Cause he's just he's could. Die. I think he's shown it already, yeah. He's used it like once or twice, I think. Which, this which thing had Landers? Landers has it? Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, I see, okay. Which, to that turn as well, just talking about Kamala still being strong, that was a minus two attack, max attack adamant, Kamala last resort into Landorus. It still did like 40%. Minus. Dude, I feel like you kind of have him. I mean, he can't bring two more mons in on rocks or they die. See, well, and this was a scary situation right here because, so flamethrower with toxic, like if you wanted to go that, that way, he kind of could have stalled out my Sylveon, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, he just gets into something like Gyarados. This is the scary. Does he, does he try to set up here? I'm sure he does. Yeah. Because one of the, one of the things I had done play. earlier in the match is went for wish and then heal bell when I got the wish back. So I think that's kind of what he was looking for there. But Skarmory was yeah, just so yeah. good this match. Whirlwinding. This is scary. That's true. What can yeah. he do to you? 
Water. I mean, he could waterfall flinch me. Yeah, that's what it come down to. Came down to. Oh, that's scary. <clears throat> Incredibly scary. Yeah, and of course he gets into the Healy list, right? I know. That's just <laughs> he, every time, dude. Both like... You know, Kiram has really started to be one of my more favorite uh, mons of the draft because of the so the dragon typing, right? Like makes it yeah relatively good defensively. It's got a decent speed tier and it's got great bulk. It's like one twenty five HP. It's, like it's stats are insane. Kiram has the it, same it stats. It is really good. Yeah. Really Have good. you used the pressure stall set yet? Uh, I don't know, actually. I might have. Actually, no, I don't think I have. It's like Toxic, Sub, Protect, Ice Beam. Oof, he went for it. Yeah. Oh, dude. See, and at this point, like, I you sh don't... You should have just stayed in attack. So I was super scared of him having Stone Edge. So at a certain point in this match, like, Scarfed Stone Edge just destroyed my team. Yeah. And I realized that, but, like, the only thing I had to take that was Scarmory. Would you have won right there? You might have. He wouldn't have uh, outsped Heliolisk, I don't think. He doesn't seem to be very fast. I imagine he ran, like, max speed Heliolisk. Because he would then outspeed uh, Infernape. Oh, you kill here? Oh, you toxic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yikes. I really expected him to switch out there. I know. He's been parting shot the whole time. And he knocks off, too. Interesting. Oof. Yep. <laughs> oh, and you gotta hope he doesn't have sub or something. Right. Yeah, I couldn't risk it. What can what can Healy List do to Infernape that I don't know its moves? I mean he can hyper voice and that still does retarded damage. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Ooh, I think Thunderbolt and Hyper Voice, yeah, they do about the same. Get the better on the whirlwind that time. So at this point, like I'm hundred percent sure that he's scarf Landorus, right? Like he's gone for defog twice, which is kinda of weird on a scarf set, but I've ran it before. Yeah. I've done that too. That way, you make sure you get the defog off. Of that way. that's probably what he was doing um, against your Infernape. See, and this is like this is the more stally portion of the match. But Heliolisk is such a pain in my side because the damage of Volt Switch plus um, plus the Toxic right meant that Sylveon really couldn't do like Wish Passing that effectively or heal up that effectively. So like I had to uh, manage it pretty well. Oh, he lived that. Interesting. Now the only. Mega Gyarados is insanely bulky. Like, it has similar bulk to Umbreon. It's wild. Yeah. I can't believe he stayed in. Yeah. I mean, he needed that damage. Good play. That was good play, yeah. Did he flinch you? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm 0 for 2 on flinches right now, but he gets me back in a bit. 0 for 3. Oh, 0 for 3. I can see Defog on Scarf Lando if you just don't need that fourth move for anything that's usually where i would think it would come in just like i don't need move let's just check defog on because like, why not like eq it not sucks on. Like I've done... Dude. Other so, so talking with him just in in the post chat so he ran with knockoff so knockoff earthquake you turn defog on his landorus he didn't bring starmie i guess because he was just that that afraid of mega zam um but he lost his hazard removal which you desperately need has a removal against the Skarmory. Um, so that's what caused him to run Defog over something like Stone Edge, which probably saved me, honestly. Yeah. But... So at this point, Kieran was my only real switch in, Healy list, but I couldn't let it get too worn down, because it still had to take a hit, pretty much, from either Landorus or Gyarados. Um, so I did. Uh, I don't know why I did. Yeah, because yeah, I forgot Plus he was there. I yeah. So this is the life orb uh, Vicable without Roost as well. So that did absolutely nothing for me, which was unfortunate. Yeah, that's tough. Thankfully, this thing only has like flamethrower. Not exactly. Yeah. The toxic hurts pretty bad though. Yeah. Toxic so toxic ain't great. So definitely would have been a better play to go into Kamala there. But I really had to manage my Kamala because at this point, all I had left was special attacker. So Skarmory had yeah. no attacking moves at all. Yeah. So, yep. It was going to hurt, though. Yep. Might Pop. kill it. Oh my God. It's not even banded. Yeah. Can you kill this thing, too? Oh, he switches. Oh, he can definitely kill it, but he can't take the damage. 
at this point lando does nothing to skarmory so it's a free you know save every time Whirl ones again goes in the blitz you probably oh you don't have an attacking move oh that's bad i can't yeah, tell her rocks need, off yeah you need to get rocks up and then yeah i think i get him up right here Ooh, oh that's yeah that's big oh this is where he flinches you right yeah oh. That's fine. It did nothing. Yeah. It could have got flinched. As long as That's probably the twice. best one. See, and it's funny because I don't know why I went for Roost twice here. Um, because I could have just whirlwind him out like either of those times. It would have been fine. But I kept clicking Roost because I just wanted the health. So. I don't know. Have you seen all four moves on Landorus yet? No, and that was and that's that was oh, my fear. Was it, he never showed knockoff, so I thought that he had Stone Edge, and in my mind, I think I lost. Like if he just brings in Lando here, he wins with Stone Edge, but oof, doesn't kill. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and boy. You land, and you land. Oh, that's that's the key. Yeah, that was the other thing. So my other move was Ice Beam, right? So that wouldn't have killed because no. Gyarados has what, like one thirty base special defense. It's yeah, it's dumb. Ooh, Roost, attack. That's it. Bulky Kiram. This thing also really came for the Starmie because it handled, handled the Starmie really well. Uh, and the Slamethrower does zero and can't it's burn. It's a good game. 80 turns, damn. 80 it, it turns. Oh, my God. I just realized. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty long. Does I apologize to the post game. Oh, my God. Say again. If you're a bandit, that might have killed, huh? It definitely would have killed, yeah. It doesn't uh, protect. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, in my mind here too, I'm thinking like he's gonna stall me out of uh, of sleep talk, hmm. so I have to figure something else out. I've got toxic on Kiram, but it was it was a matter of like getting it in safely. So I just wanted to make sure that this was what he was going to continue doing and not switch out to like Lander because I think this is what wound that's what wound up happening. He can't sack Lander, so I think he yeah uh, he has to stay in. Well, his Lando like can't touch the Vicavolt Vault, really. Yeah. It could have knocked off, and that would have been really it. But I think Vicavolt Vault was already at pretty low health from earlier. You're at, like, 40-ish. Yeah, 40. Hey, what's our timing at, Jordan, by the way? Are we still okay on time? We're at an hour. How long do you guys want this uh, first podcast to be? I think we can finish this one, and then we can, we can call it good. Do our outro. I was going to say, yeah, do you want to do any questions from the Dropbox since we didn't really answer any of those at all? Yeah, I mean, we can do a couple yeah. if you want. Let's do, I'm, I'm, I'm down let's for some. Fire. Should probably questions considering we asked for them. Let's wrap yeah. it up. <laughs> I was, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, we might as well. I mean. Here, you yeah, can just what? change the speed to normal. How many more Two. turns does it go? Not, yeah. not that many. Big bolt goes down. I get Kierman. He didn't have and that was the difference. that was the difference right there. Was getting Kierman at a good amount of health to toxic it? Because the only way he gets rid of that is natural cure, and he just he can't afford to go into Landorus right now. That's actually fair. That's actually fair. He stays in here. Yeah, good play. So now he can't wish pass into Landorus either, so he's forced to stay in with the Toxic. And I, I think this is the second or third turn of Toxic damage. So right? one more return plus Toxic kills it. He's wearing you out on last resorts too. You only got four left at this point. Well, I, yeah, I don't even really need them. Oh, dude, he's so close. Wow. Kills the Earthquake. But I'm at a good amount of health from earlier, and I know he's not Yachi. Wow, that was a really good battle. In the bolt, yeah, around. dude. Let's go, dude. Let's go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chug my drink for that. Turns. That's it. Oh, man, we I felt bad for bringing like game. stall, but you can't not really bring some element of stall against a blissey. You they have can't. a they have a blissey. That's you, you yeah. shouldn't go bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get some questions in. All right, let's All right, see here. here. I'm pouring a drink. So, here, let's do first question. Um, from Lucifer, he asks, How drunk? quote unquote not very not yet it's only five o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon i know i'm only one drink in dude so uh I'll give it like a two out of ten maybe I don't know. that's about right yeah, i'm only one drink uh 
it, one out of ten. Yeah, we gotta set this up next week, boys. I know. I know. All right. Question two. What we got? Let's see. Who is the most underrated coach in C division, and why is it me? I'm gonna argue that my good buddy Jordan here is the most underrated coach in C division. All right. Oof. Stop, stop plugging yourself, Techno. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, hold up. Yeah, I'll live up to that for the rest of the season. However long it may that's two weeks. So Oh I gotta find I can't remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Let me see who's who's in here. Um hmm. I can't remember their names. But I think I lost to the Ibiza Island Infernapes, I think. I think they were pretty good. That's Patty, yeah. Let's see who let's see who wrecked me this season because yeah, it was Patty. Patty five owed me like e easy peasy. It was nothing. <laughs> yeah, I think he's the most underrated in C. They'd be like that sometimes. He's pretty good. I've, I've lost to two of these coaches in the off season one zero uh, to the Kedling Reapers and Austin Magnemites back to back weeks. That was a tough time. <laughs> yeah, so that was Techno actually the the Magnemites. Yeah. Yeah, Insanity's pretty good too. Yeah. So Dragons of Might is wanting to know why his poop is bloody. Why do you think that is, Dan? Uh, I'm not a doctor. I recommend seeing one. <laughs> that's, that's all I got. That's some fair advice. <laughs> Follow-up question. Why is Cheez-Its poop green? Oh. Uh, oh, man. Too many vegetables. I think he's leading a double life as a... Uh, uh, what is that? Sam I Am? Oh, my God, uh, yeah. He's got the green eggs and ham going in one end. Oh. <laughs> oh, never mind. They just ignore me. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me miss your fucking... reference going in that, that direction. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think we got to tighten our shot group here on the uh, the Dropbox this next week because there's a lot of conversation I'm scrolling through here. A lot of, yeah, wild stuff. Um, Ooh, here, Here's a decent one. So, what is your most useful talent that you have? Ooh, that's a good one. None of the above. <laughs> yes. You got something. You got something oh, really quirky oh, no. that you're good at. I'm really flexible. Ooh. <laughs> you can take that how you will, but. Daddy, okay. I'm 6'6", <laughs> six, six, and I'm really flexible. <laughs> you got to reach all the way up here. I dig it. Oh, my Lord. All right, what about you, Dan? Uh, ability to remember completely useless sports or sports facts. Spit one right now. Oh, I did second that. Uh, I think I don't know if it's still true. It was at the time when I looked at it. I want to say David Robinson is the last player to have a quadruple double in the NBA. I can't remember if someone's gotten it since. Oh my! That's, that's actually that's wow. incredibly niche. How does LeBron not have a quadruple double in the NBA? It steals or blocks. That's just not. It's really hard to get to ten there. For sure, but wow. Okay. As somebody who doesn't really pay attention or know that much about basketball at all, I'm not entirely convinced you didn't just make that up on the spot. Quadruple it was true double. at some point. Uh, quadruple I mean, double. Ten in four different like categories. Who could get it? Like, be like it's or it's like... basically got to be centers or someone who's getting a lot of steals. LeBron, yeah. Who I mean, else it sounds legit. It? Hmm. Yeah. I'm right. double checking it now because I can't remember if someone's got it in the last couple of years. I don't think so, but. We'll take that. Sam, what you got? What's your useless you, talent? You take those. Uh, useless talent? Or oh, useful, what? sorry. Whatever. Uh, yeah, I, useful, I, I'd say, I don't know. I'm kind of like a good, uh, I don't know, judge of character, I would say, and like a good manager. Um, nah, that's lame. Try again. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm really dude. good at math. I, can, <laughs> I can't drink fast, but I can drink a lot. Does that count? I guess. It's much more fun. Yeah. <laughs> much yeah, more. I mean, it's, it's fun watching me try to bonk beer. I throw up on myself a little bit, but I, I rebound. I don't give up. And I, I think. <laughs> so. Never a quarter, you're a quarter away to a quadruple double. Yeah. Mama didn't raise no bitch. <laughs> That's it, dude. Daddy didn't raise no bitch, you know? Matter of fact, next week. We so I think our downfall this week is that we recorded it too early in the day. Lesson learned. We'll get an Australian guy on the podcast next week, and we'll do it later in the evening. How about that? Uh, well, I guess walk me through your logic there. Well, it's too long, or we went off on too many tangents, or what's the problem with being middle of the day? 
Make no, there's no problem. Not drunk enough. We that's sure that's what he's getting at. Yeah. I guess that's fair. Like, like you're doing stuff like in the middle of the day, right? But like by the evening, you kind of retired down and you've gotten where you're going to be for the evening. Especially if you're going to record a podcast, right? Like you said, you were just at the range, right? Like I yeah. hope and pray that you weren't drinking at the range, right? <laughs> no. No, yeah, that's one place I won't <laughs> And I'm about to go watch a movie, so I couldn't really, you know. There, there you go. Yeah. So we'll just blame it on the time zone next time. And we'll get somebody in here who's like 14 hours ahead. Oh, God. Living in the future. Yeah, yeah that's like the story of my life right now in the mental. Damn it. Oh, yeah, you you got the one guy who's from Singapore. Yeah, he's 12 hours. He's literally yeah. off my schedule. Yep. I'll tell you, if we have uh, the most, like, I'll say, like, a good, useful talent that I've got, per se, is that I am a king master of parking places. Like, reverse parking, like, in the garage. You should see how tight a squeeze my Ram 1500 takes into the garage i had to like build a deck around it so that my uh my truck fit into the garage i whip that thing in like it's a nascar race like pull it in front of the house like reverse into my driveway at like 10 miles an hour and i just throw it in in park good to go i can relate to that i share your talent for being able to park exquisitely well i will hold myself (laughs) in high esteem i'm so such a good parker so i'm a better parker than you yeah Parking <laughs> fight. <laughs> Fighty All right, you're going to have to come over um, and park with us. That's how we're going to figure this out. Yeah, all right. Tune in next week when we, we meet in the parking lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. Gears Welcome Visit. And there's no video proof. We're still just going to have, like, you know, uh, we'll that, provide battles going. Yeah, it's it's going to be, uh, like, handheld. Like, I've got a camcorder and, and Sam. Uh-huh. And fucking Jordan's over there sitting on, on the stool, like, showing videos still. <laughs> the battles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I gotta keep it going, guys. I'll have my dual monitors there with us. Exactly, yeah. The whole desk set up. There we go. So I think that wraps up, like, about, what, an hour 15? Hour 20? Hour 12. Hour 12. Yeah, that sounds like good. a good first run to me. Yeah, I agree. And no one will ever know how this battle ended. Nope, we're going to cut it nope. off right here, yeah. turn 22. If they want to know, they're going to have to watch the whole And what is this, B Division? I think uh, that is... A or B. That's Gentleman Thomas and Jersey. either Rose? Oh, it's Jersey's, Jersey's game. Oh, I didn't even realize. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to get with Dan and he'll show you how the match went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there we go. All right, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in to our first episode of the WPF Community Podcast. Dinner was a family dinner. Is that what we're going with? For now, yeah. That's it. For now. Somebody yeah. help us out. Come up with a better name, please, yeah. for next week. Drop it in the podcast <laughs> drop box. We'll go from there. Exactly. All right, guys. Have a good one. Peace out. All right, boys. Bye-bye.